Hey third graders, we're going to continue reading The Night at Dawn by Mary Pope Osborne. Before I read chapter two, can you tell me who the main characters are? And then we just read another book by Mary Pope Osborne. What was the book about? All right, so chapter two starts on page 10 and it's called Leaving Again. No one's here, Annie shouted down. Jack thought about going home. Then he thought about all the books in the treehouse. He started up the ladder. Then he was nearly to the treehouse. He saw a light in the distant sky. Dawn was starting to break. He crawled through a hole in the floor and took off his backpack. It was dark inside the treehouse. Annie was shining her flashlight on the books scattered about. They're still here, she said. She stopped the light on the dinosaur book. It was the book that, that had taken them to the time of the dinosaurs. Remember the Tyrannosaurus? asked Annie. Jack shuddered. Of course he remembered. How could anyone forget seeing a, a real live Tyrannosaurus Rex? The light fell on a book about Pennsylvania. A red silk bookmark stuck out of it. Remember the pe picture of Frog Creek, said Annie. Of course, said Jack. That was the picture that brought them home. There's my favorite, said Annie. The light was shining on a book about knights and castles. There was a blue leather bookmark in it. Annie turned to the page with the bookmark. There was a picture of a knight on the black horse. He was riding toward a castle. Annie, close that book, said Jack. I know what you're thinking. Annie pointed at the knight. Don't, Annie. We wish we could see the guy for real, Annie said. No, we don't, shouted Jack. They heard a strange sound. Nay! It sounded like a horse neighing. They both went to the window. Annie shined the flashlight down on the ground. Oh no, whispered Jack. A knight, said Annie. A knight in shining armor, riding a black horse through the Frog Creek woods. Then the wind began to moan. The leaves began to tremble. It was happening again. We're leaving, cried Annie. Get down, the wind moaned louder. The leaves shook harder and the treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. He shivered, their air was damp and cool. The sound of a horse whining came again from below. Nay, I think we're here, whispered Annie. She was still holding the castle book. Jack peeked out the window. A huge castle loomed out of the fog. He looked around the treehouse was in a different oak tree. And down below, the knight of the black horse was riding by. We can't stay here, said Jack. We have to go home and make a plan first. He picked up the book about Pennsylvania. He opened it to the page with a red silk bookmark. He pointed to the po photograph of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish... No, said Annie. She yanked the book away from him. Let's stay. I want to visit the castle. You're nuts. We have to examine the situation, said Jack from home. Let's examine it here, said Annie. Come on, he held out his hand. Give it. Annie gave Jack the book. Okay, you can go home. I'm staying, she said. She clipped the flashlight to her belt. Wait, said Jack. I'm going to take a peek, a teeny peek, she said. And she scooted down the ladder. Jack groaned. Okay, she had won. He couldn't leave without her. Besides, he sort of wanted to take a peek himself. He put down the book about Pennsylvania. He dropped the castle book in, into his pack. He stepped onto the ladder and headed down into the cool, misty air. All right, so that finishes chapter two. And we have one question. So chapter number three on the uh, comprehension question packet. All right, so it says, what did Annie say when she pointed to the picture of the knight in the book? A, was it, we wish we could see the guy for real? B, I wonder if this is a real knight in shining armor. C, take us to the castles. Or D, magic treehouse, take us to meet this night before dawn comes. All right, so before we answer number four and five, I'm gonna continue reading chapter three. All right, so chapter three starts on page 17. All right, so it says, across the bridge, 
Annie was under the tree, looking around the foggy ground. The knight's riding toward that bridge, I think, said Annie. The bridge goes to the castle. Wait, I'll look it up, said Jack. Give me the flashlight. He took the flashlight from her and pulled the castle book out of the pack. He opened it to the page with the leather bookmark. He read the words under the picture of the knight. This is a knight arriving for a castle feast. Knights wore armor when they traveled long and dangerous distances. The armor was very heavy. A helmet alone could weigh up to 40 pounds. Wow, Jack had weighed 40 pounds when he was five years old. So it'd be like riding a horse with a five-year-old on your head. Jack pulled out his notebook. He wanted to try to take notes as he'd done on the dinosaur trip. He wrote, heavy head. What else? He turned the pages of the castle book. He found a picture that showed the whole castle and the buildings around it. The knight's crossing the bridge and Annie. He's going through the gate. He's gone. Jack studied the bridge in the picture he read. A drawbridge crossed the moat. The moat was filled with water to help protect the castle from enemies. Some people believed crocodiles were kept in the moat. Jack wrote in his notebook, crocodiles and moat? Look, said Annie, peering through the mist. A windmill right over there. Yay, there's a windmill in here too, said Jack, pointed at the picture. Look at the real one, Jack, said Annie, not the one in the picture. A piercing shriek split the air. Yikes, said Annie. It sounded like it came from the little house over there. She pointed through the fog. There's a little house here, said it, Jack. Studying the picture, he turned the page and read. The hawk house was in the inner, inner word of the castle. Hawks were trained to hunt other birds and small animals. Jack wrote in his notebook, Hawks and hawk house? We must be the inner ward, said Jack. Listen, whispered Annie. You hear that? Drums, horns, they're coming from the castle. Let's go see. Wait, said Jack. He turned more pages of the book. I wanted to see what's really going on, Jack. Not what's in the book, said Annie. But look at this, said Jack. He pointed to a picture of the big party. Men were standing by the door playing drums and horns. He read, Fanfares were played to announce different dishes and feasts. Feasts were held in the great hall. You can look at the book. I'm going to the real feast, said Annie. Wait, said Jack, studying the picture. It showed boys his age carrying trays of food. Whole pigs, pies, and peacocks with all their feathers. Peacocks, Jack wrote. They eat peacocks? He held up the book to show Annie. Look, I think they eat. Where was she? gone again. Jack looked through the fog. He heard the real drums and the real horns. He saw the real hawk house, the real windmill, the real moat. He saw Annie dashing across the real drawbridge. Then she vanished through the gate leading to the castle. All right, so that's the end of chapter three. All right, so we got two questions to answer. What is the purpose of a moat around a castle? All right, so just leave a complete sentence describing the moat around a castle. All right, so number five. Read the following sentence from chapter three. It says, fanfares were played to announce different dishes in a feast. What does the underlined word mean? All right, so the underlined word is fanfare. So they're wondering, what does fanfares mean? All right, so A, is it big meals for a king or queen? Is it B, games played before a meal? C, games in which people smash plates and cups? Or D, short tunes played on a musical instrument? All right, so I'll continue reading the chapter, so look for another video. All right.